Okay, a very good afternoon to everybody. So hopefully you all already uh, take your lunch. So uh, today we are going to start with a brand new chapter where we are going to continue with uh, chapter five, group 14. Huh? Okay, so uh, let's begin our lesson. Okay, so uh, as usual, we are going to start with the objective question. So objective question number one sounds like this. Which of the following is responsible for increasing relative stability of the plus two oxidation state with the increase of proton number in the group 14 element? So uh, as we already uh, as we already learned that when going down to the group 14, uh, plus four stability decrease, whereas plus two oxidation state stability increase. So this increase is due to the... Uh, inert pair effect where the electrons from the S orbital is hard to excite the P orbital. So due to the presence of the 4F and 5D orbital in between. So therefore, uh, in, in, instead of exciting from 6S to 6P, it is easier to remove the two electrons from the 6P. So this effect is what we call as the inert pair effect. So therefore, the best answer that describes all this is because of the D, a more conclusive uh, uh, reason, okay? That is question number one. Then question number two, uh, tetrachloride of group 14 MCL4 has the following properties. It is easily to hydrolyze. So when it is easily hydrolyzed, definitely uh, carbon is out from our question already. Uh, thermally unstable. So if thermally unstable, that means it's either lead or tin. Decompose under room temperature. So this is the keyword uh, that decompose under room temperature. So, so far only lead can do that. So therefore the best answer for this description is talking about lead. So the answer is C. We go to number three. So number three says that, which of the following is the Lewis structure of the product form when lead is heated with chlorine? So you must know by yourself, uh, lead is more stable as a plus two oxidation state. So when you heat it directly with chlorine, you will form an ionic compound of the uh, PVCl2 because uh, lead is more stable as a plus two oxidation state. Therefore, uh, the best answer that describes the lead chloride compound that will form as a result of this heating is A. Okay. okay, so that is for question number three. Then we close to question number four. Which of the following statements explain the decrease of the thermal stability of the chloride of the oxide uh, and the oxide of group 14 elements in the periodic table when descending down group 14? A, the bond energy between group 14 and chlorine decreased. Bond energy decreased is correct because um, as the bond length increased, bond strength decreased. So bond energy that is required to break the bond also become lesser. So one is correct. Huh? Okay, first and second ionization of the group 14 increased. Now this statement is true. However, it does not uh, it, is, it does not explain why the plus four stability oxidation state decreased when going down to the group. So that is why second is not the best choice. Standard electron potential decreased when going down to the group 14. So uh, decreasing here means that it is becoming more and more negative. But in the real case, uh, it is becoming more and more positive. Uh, okay? So uh, more and more positive means that uh, equilibrium will shift more to the right. Uh, I think that uh, in this case, uh, the standard electron potential is referring to this. Uh, uh, for example, if you have GE4 plus plus 4E minus, uh, 2E minus, give a GE2 plus. So they are talking about this uh, uh, half equations in here. Okay? But in this case, it's becoming more and more positive. Huh? Okay? It's becoming more and more positive. Indicates that equilibrium shift more to the right here. Okay, so number three is also wrong. And number four, the inner pair effect occur between S and P orbital become more significant when going down, which is correct. So uh, the best answer that describes uh, why is it that the plus two stability of, uh, stability increase while the plus four decrease is due to one and four. Okay, so the best answer in here is B. Then we are going to go for number five. So number five sounds like this. Which of the following statement is true regarding of the conductivity of graphite? So it is higher than those of the metal, which is not true, okay? Because uh, you only have one delocalized electron, where metal you can have two up to four delocalized electron. So number two is conductivity is due to the formation of sp2 hybridization of the each carbon, which is correct because uh, carbon is sp2 hybridized. That is one you have one unhybridized uh, orbital with an electron in it. Okay, so B is correct, but maybe it, is it the best answer? Let's have a look at C. Its conductivity is due to the presence of delocalized electron, which is true, and it's actually due to sp2. Then after you have carbon hydridized in sp2, has delocalized electron, that is why delocalized electron presence. So C is a better answer than B. So that is why the best answer that describes the whole thing is because of C. 
Okay, as for D, its conductivity due to the giant molecular structure is incorrect. Huh? Uh, so the best answer that describe why is it that it has a conductivity is due to C, which is a better answer. Number six, an oxide of metal X liberated chlorine gas when heated with concentrated hydrochloric acid. After cooling, the additional of the sulfuric acid produced white precipitate. So this uh, oxide could be what? So they are, uh, actually, uh, this is a uh, reaction that describe uh, lead for oxide. Uh. Okay, so um, lead for oxide can react with concentrated HCl and liberated uh, chlorine gas. Okay, according to the equation, PbO2 plus 4 HCl give PbCl2 plus Cl2 plus 2 h 2 And then when you uh, add that to this uh, solution, you uh, from the PbCl2, uh, you react to form PbSO4. So that is why you form as a white precipitate in here. So uh, with that, that is the best answer for this question is D. Okay, so this is number six. Then we go to question number seven. The diagram below shows the structure of a type of silicate. So this is the amphibole in here. Okay, so which of the following statement is correct with regard to the above structure? Number one, repeating unit of the structure is SiO4 4 minus. Is it correct? Now, if you look carefully uh, at the repeating unit, so this is one repeating unit as I told you. So the whole repeating unit in here is made of Si4. Okay, you have four Si1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, oxygen, you have 11, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh. So SI4, O11, and then how many minus? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 minus. So the repeating unit is SI4, 6 minus, therefore A is wrong. So this is a type of cyclosilicate. Uh. No, uh, cyclosilicate does not look like this. Uh. So B is also wrong. Is present in the asbestos, which is yes, uh, part of the amphibole. And then each silicon is surrounded by three oxygen atoms, which is not true because it's surrounded by two or three oxygen atoms. Okay, so this is incorrect. So, therefore, the best answer in here is C. Then it goes to question number eight. The oxide of a metal M is soluble in both aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. That means uh, it is amphoteric. Eh? So the when the oxide is heated gently, strongly, a colorless gas evolves that without the glowing wooden splinter. So what could be the oxide M? So in the first statement, which is amphoteric, so all of them in the answer so far are amphoteric. But the last statement that says that when heated strongly, uh, a colorless gas evolved that ignites, that means the oxygen gas is released. So the only uh, oxide that can release oxygen in here is lead for oxide. Uh, okay, so uh, the best answer in here is D. Number nine, which uh, statement about the oxide of group 14 element from carbon in the periodic tables is correct? A, all oxide are covalently bonded oxide, which is wrong. Uh? Uh, there are some which are ionic uh, bonded. For example, tin 2 oxide, lead 2 oxide, tin 4 uh, let 4 oxide is also ionic compound. Eh? B, acidity of the oxide with plus 2 oxidation state increase. So in plus 2, CO, SiO, neutral, GO, SNO, PPO are amphoteric. So number B is also not the best. Then the oxide of plus 4 oxidation state are more stable in the plus 2 state down group 14, which is the other way around. Eh? The plus 4 is less stable, plus 2 is more stable. So D is wrong. And then the basicity of the group 14 dioxide increased down to the group. Uh, this one is true. Why? Because um, if you look carefully, CO2 and SiO2 are uh, acidic, but GO2, SNO2, PbO2 are amphoteric. So acidity decreased. So when we say acidity at the, uh, decrease at the same time, we are trying to say that the basicity increased when going down to the group. Okay, so the best answer in here is D. Okay, then we go to number 10. So the number 10 sounds like this. Uh, which of the following statements are true about the oxide of group 14 uh, from carbon to lead in the periodic table? All the oxides of group 14 are amphoteric oxide, which is wrong. Eh? Only germanium, tin, and lead oxide, no matter plus two and plus four, are amphoteric. Eh? So A is wrong. General formula of the oxide are XO and XO2, which are correct. Okay. Uh, this is the two oxidation state of the oxides of group 14. Number three, stability of the group 14 oxide with plus four oxidation state decreased down to the group, which is also true because going down to group 14, stability of plus four decreased, plus two increased. And CO and SiO are stable under room temperature. Actually, no, huh? CO and SiO are not stable under room temperature. And uh, SiO can even uh, disproportionate uh, to become Si plus SiO2. So, uh, Four is wrong. So the best answer in here is two and three only, therefore C.
Number 11, a few types of glasses that produce the additional metal or non-metal oxide to silicate. Which of the following glasses has the highest expansion of coefficient after adding the metal or non-metal to it? So uh, what does it mean by highest coefficient in here? That means that it is, uh, uh, it is uh, easily, uh, it is not easily that, uh, not easily uh, expand on heating, okay? So the best glass that uh, does not expand, uh, the glass that easily expand, uh, okay? With the other glasses, such as a uh, borrow silicate and uh, lead silicate, they are not easily uh, expand. So the best glass that describe high coefficient thermal expansion is actually soda glass, okay? High, uh, high expansion coefficient is trying to tell you that uh, easily to uh, expand. Uh. So the answer 11 is A. And number 12, which of the following oxide of group 14 has the highest melting point? So in here, uh, CO2 are simple covalent molecule hold by weak metal wall forces. CO also the same, simple covalent molecule. PBO are uh, ionic compound, okay? But then the PBO2 are simple covalent molecule also, okay? So uh, in here, the best answer that has the highest melting point in here is lead for oxide, therefore B. Number 13, which of the following is true of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide molecule? So both molecules are polar, wrong. Eh? Only a CO is polar, CO2 is non-polar. Uh, for information, this is how CO and CO2 looks like. Uh, CO2 looks like this. So CO as uh, you already know that it looks like this. Eh? So uh, only uh, CO is polar, but CO2 is not polar. So one is strong. Number two, carbon atom undergo SP hybridization. Yes, both atom undergo SP hybridization. Eh? So two is correct. There are pi bond and sigma bond between C and O, obviously. So uh, as long as you are double bond and triple bond, definitely you have both sigma bond and pi bond. So three is correct. So both gases are greenhouse gases. No, eh? only CO2 is a greenhouse gases. CO is a toxic gas. Okay, so it is not a greenhouse gases. So the best answer in here is C. Okay, then we go to number 14. Which of the following chloride film in moist air? So uh, in here, uh, they are trying to tell you that film in moist air means that you form HCl. Lah. So uh, in here, they cannot uh, hydrolyze, uh, they cannot undergo hydrolysis. CCL4 cannot undergo hydrolysis. So uh, plus two chloride also cannot undergo hydrolysis. So the only one that can undergo hydrolysis is the plus four chloride. So the best answer in here is the germanium chloride, okay? So the answer is D. Okay, then number 15, which element is found in both solder and pewter? So uh, solder and pewter are a mixture of the lead and also tin. So this one you have to memorize on your own. They are uh, made of what alloys in here. Okay, so the answer is C. Okay, then we all go to question number 16. Which, are, uh, which is or are true about both haloalkane CCL4 and CFCL3? So uh, compound which does not hydrolyze, uh, actually CCL4 cannot hydrolyze, but this, uh, they are not, well, sorry, both are not able to hydrolyze this because they does not have MTD orbital, sorry for that. Okay, then number two, polar organic compound. Uh, no, uh, CCL4 is not uh, uh, this uh, polar, it is a non-polar. Okay, number three, they are both greenhouse gases, only CFCL3, which is a CFC, la, it's a greenhouse gases, but CCL4 is not, so number three is wrong. And both are volatile liquid, which is true, because they are simple covalent molecule hold by weak van der Waal forces. So one and four is correct, so the best answer in here is B. Number 17, which property is true of the element of group 14 elements on descending the group? So number one, electrical conductivity increase, correct, okay. So this one you have to try your best to remember the trend. Huh? And then B, electronegativity of the element increase, wrong, huh? it is decreasing. Huh? Okay. So no matter which group that we are talking about, all electronegativity decrease. C, the stability of the plus four oxidation state increase. No, huh? the stability of the plus four oxidation state decrease, huh? not increase. So C is wrong. And then the catenation of the element increase. Catenation is the ability to form bond in between them. So uh, as the bond length become longer, catenation become difficult. So therefore decrease, not increase, okay? So the best answer that described in here is A. 
Okay, so that is for number 17. Then we go to number 18. Uh, silicon forms an acid solution with water, but CCL4 do not dissolve in water. So why? So this one, uh, I hope that you try your best to remember why CCL4 cannot undergo hydrolysis in uh, water, but the rest of the group 14 tetrachloride can hydrolyze in water. It is due to the available MTD orbitals for uh, group 14 compounds such as silicon, germanium, tin, and lead, but as carbon don't have MTD orbitals, so it cannot coordinate water molecule, hence cannot undergo hydrolysis. So the best answer that described in here is A. Okay, number 19. Which type of red cannot change the blue litmus to red when dissolved in aqueous solution? So uh, blue to red, uh, blue to uh, blue to red uh, is actually trying to tell you that this mixture is acidic. Okay, so in another word, which of the following cannot undergo hydrolysis to form the uh, acidic solution? Ah? So this one is similar to the above. It is the CCL4 that cannot undergo hydrolysis. Okay, so therefore, uh, the answer in here is A. Okay, we are looking for cannot. Okay, so that is for number 19. Ah? Very straightforward questions. Ah? Okay, then we go to number 20. So a prism is made of lead glass, which contain PBO and SiO. It should be kept away from what? A, an acidic substance because PBO2, PBO is a base. So it is, must be kept from acidic, but not because PBO is base. PBO is m 4 -teric. An alkaline solution because SiO2 is acidic, which is correct. Okay, actually both uh, PBO and SiO2 can react with uh, alkaline solutions, huh? so which is correct. Heat because PBO is thermally unstable, not PBO, but PBO2 is thermally unstable. PBO is thermally stable. Okay. And water because PBO and SiO2 are soluble. In here, no, uh, both of them are insoluble in water. Okay. So the best answer that describes all of them are B. 21. A 1.00 kilogram of sample containing lead for oxide rare excess concentrated hydrochloric acid and release 24.4 decimeter cube of gas under room temperature pressure. What is the percentage of lead four oxide in the sample? So given to you, molar volume of gas is 24.4 decimeter cube per molar. So you have to first write the equations in here, where you have PbO2 plus 4HCl give PbCl2 plus Cl2 plus 2H2O. So in here, the uh, gas that they are talking about in here is a Cl2 gas in here. Okay, they're trying to say about Cl2 gas. Huh? So we calculate the mole of the chlorine gas to so 24.4 divided by 24.4, you get one mole. So stacked trinitically, one PbCl, PbO2 to form one mole of PbCl. So more of PbO2 is also equals to one mole. So mass of the PbO2 is one time the RMM, you get 239 gram. So percentage is uh, 239 gram times 1000 because it's a uh, Kilogram, okay, because sorry, you know, the gram they want to convert to uh, percentage one kilogram, okay, so you get 23.9. So the best answer in here is B, okay, so uh, that is how you solve for question number 21. Okay, immediately we go to question number 22. Silicon is a part of the silicon compound that is used widely to in our daily life application. Structure below show a part of silicon silicon using uh, used as a silicon glue. Okay, a uh, other than the silicon glue, silicon is also used to make what material in the fiberglass or fiber optic, which is cannot uh, they are not suitable because only glass can, uh, but uh, silicon cannot uh. So B, semiconductor in an electronic board uh, also cannot, it can, uh, it will not conduct electricity yeah, in this case. C, waterproof material, which is a yes. Why we say that it is a yes? Because of the hydrophobic properties that is present inside all these RQ radical, so uh, RQ substance. So that is why a water molecule cannot easily uh, attracted for, by this uh, silicon in here. Okay, so C is correct and it is used to make uh, ceramic and white towel. So it is a uh, silicon because it's soft, eh? so that is why not suitable to use as ceramic and white towel. Eh? Okay, so the best answer in here is C. Then 23, an oxide of Q has a boiling point 2200 degrees Celsius. It reacts with concentrated potassium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, but it's insoluble in water. So what is an oxide Q? That means when you react with both a HCl and also a QOH, so you are M4-teric already. Uh, sorry, not M4-teric, it's very, very, very. 
because the question said hydrofluoric. Uh, hydrofluoric is very special. Uh. Hydrofluoric acid is very corrosive to SiO2 and SiO2 does not dissolve in water. Uh. So what they are doing trying to describe is for SiO2. Uh. Uh, SnO2, BbO2, they are sparingly soluble in water. So CO2 sparingly soluble in water. So, but the one that describe uh, about all of these are trying to tell us about how uh, the, uh, what are the re what are the reactions when take place when you react with this uh, SiO2? Okay, so the best answer in here is boy B. Then we go to 24. The boiling point of CCl4 and SnCl4 are 20 and 4 degrees Celsius respectively. Which of the following statement best explain the difference of this melting point? Is it because carbon is more electronegative than tin? Now, this statement is correct, but it is not the reason why uh, CCL4 is more the uh, boiling point higher. Uh, no. CCL4 is more stable, more polar than SNCL4, also incorrect, because both are actually non-polar molecule. Eh? Bond length of CCL4 is shorter than as, as shorter and stronger. Now, this statement is also correct, but it also, also does not explain. Now, uh, when we talk about a melting point, boiling point, we are talking about intermolecular forces, not the covalent bond length of the strength in here. So even though this statement is correct, but it is not uh, our choices because it does not have any relationship with why boiling point is greater. Huh? And the weight intermolecular forces in CCL4 is greater than SNCL4, which is true. Huh? So this is the reason uh, why uh, is it that uh, CCL4 has a higher boiling point. Okay. okay, then we go to 25. Which substance is not a component of the zeolite? So in zeolite, uh, it is a type of aluminum silicate. Uh, for example, you can have group 1, group 2 metal, uh, such as uh, potassium, sodium, or magnesium from group 2. Okay, So uh, inside here, you do not have sulfur inside them. Uh, so the best answer in here is D. So uh, sulfur is not a component inside as you like. Okay. okay, so that is for 25. Then we go to 26. The relative stability of the plus two and plus four oxidation state of group 14 are shown in the graph below. So this is the graph. Okay, so as you can see, stability of the plus four decreases, stability of the plus two oxidation state increases. Which statement is true about the group 14 compound number one? CO2 is stable due to inner pair effect. No, uh, CO2 is stable not because of inner pair effect. Uh, it's the PBO is stable due to inner pair. So A is wrong. So B, uh, SiO2 is thermally unstable. No, uh, SiO2 is very thermally stable uh, because it is made of giant covalent structure. Uh, okay? So B is wrong. C, SiO2 is readily hydrolyzed in water. It's not SnO2, uh, it's SnCl4 uh, that's hydrolyzed in water. And then D, PbO2 react with hot concentrated hydrochloric acid to form PbCl2 and Cl2, which is correct. Uh. So uh, as we have already described previously in our uh, question. So the equation in here is a PbO2 plus uh, 4HCl uh, form of PbCl2 plus Cl2 plus 2H2O. So this is the equation when we have a concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. When we have a uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, then it is a normal acid base reaction. But this one is a redox reaction. Huh? Okay, so that is for number 26. Then we go to 27. Soda and uh, alloy and tin. So a sample of soda is heat in excess oxygen and is then allowed to cool. So uh, which substance is remained? So in here, when you heated the both uh, tin, tin and also lead, huh? So they are trying to ask you which uh, what is uh, which one is more stable? Huh? Is it plus two or plus four? So you have to bear in mind that in the uh, tin and lead. Tin is more stable as a plus four oxidation state, while lead is more stable as a plus two oxidation state. So when you form the oxide, so the oxide form in here is um, SnO2 and PbO. Okay. Okay. So uh, the answer in here is uh, donkey. Lah, D lah. So that is for 27. Immediately, we go to uh, 28. In a group 14 element from carbon to lead, which property increases? So uh, is it acidity of the oxide? No, uh, acidity of oxide decreases. Uh, thermal stability of the covalent chloride also decreases. The stability of the plus 2 oxidation state, yes, increase. 
And then the stability of the plasma oxidation state, no, decreased. So the best answer that describes which one increased is the stability of the plus two oxidation state. Then we go to 29. So the uses of data booklet is relevant to this question. Which of the following uh, property of the dioxide XO2 in the group 40 element from germanium to lead will expect to increase in the magnitude of uh, proton number? Okay, A, standard reduction potential of XO2 plus 4H plus plus 3 minus. Now, if you look carefully, uh, uh, you are talking about, they are trying to talk about the stability of plus 4 to plus 2. Uh. So as you already know, uh, equilibrium will, uh, as going down to the group, equilibrium will shift more to the right. So in another word, the standard reduction potential will increase. So number one is correct. Number two, thermal, uh, uh, temperature of decomposition. Uh. So decomposition temperature will decrease because it is easier to dissociate when going down to the group two. Okay, Lead four oxide is the easiest to dissociate. So the thermal stability is decreased. So uh, number two is wrong. And then number three, the magnitude of the enthalpy change of the reaction 2XO2 plus give 2XO plus O2 increase. So uh, this is true. Um, because uh, in, uh, the magnitude of the enthalpy change of a reaction, uh, which is true, you become more and more negative, more exothermic, because as uh, going across the, when going down to the group, sorry, when going down to the group, the stability of the plus four oxidation state will decrease, plus two oxidation state will increase. Therefore, the magnitude of the enthalpy change for this reaction will eventually uh, increase when the, going down to the group. So uh, this one is also correct. And the energy gap is between S and P orbital at the same energy level. So they are talking about the distance between 4S, 4P, uh, 5S, 5P. Yes, uh, they will eventually increase. Uh, okay? And then in the, the worst is 6S, 6P, uh, because in 6S, you have uh, uh, 4F, you have uh, 5D, and then you have uh, 6P. So therefore, the gaps is getting greater and greater. Uh. So it's also increasing, which is correct. So the best description in here is one correct, uh, three correct, and four also correct. Okay, so the best answer in here is C. So that is for question number 29. Then we go to question number 30. Which statement about the oxide of the element in group 14 are correct? One, GO2 is more acidic than SNO2. No, huh? in this case, there is no sure, uh, there is no saying that which one is more acidic. Huh? So uh, number one is incorrect. Number two, GEO2 is more covalent than GO. So a uh, plus four oxidation state is definitely more covalent huh? uh, as the property of the plus four is due to the uh, formation of the sp3 hybridizations. Huh? So uh, the statement number two will also be correct. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, uh, lead two oxide, lead four oxide has a greater thermal stability than lead four, which is wrong. Okay. Uh, because lead lead two oxide has a greater thermal stability. That means hard to dissociate. Okay. So PBO is harder to dissociate compared to PBO two. And last but not least, uh, GO two SN also and PBO two uh, can react with both this one, which is correct because they are all amphoteric. Uh, so four is correct. Okay. Then we look back at the number one. GO two is more acidic than SNO two is probably correct because we say that we're going down group fourteen. Uh, the acidity uh, decrease. Okay. And so when we say acidity decrease, that means GO two is more acidic than SNO two uh, generally. Okay. So uh, number, the correct one is one, two, and four. So the answer is B. Okay, then we go to 31. Carbon fiber is one of the composite compounds which is widely used to make a bulletproof jacket or fighting uh, fire fighting gear. Which of the following of the carbon fiber is suitable to use as a bulletproof jacket? So why is it like that? Number one, it has low density. Carbon is the lightest, okay? Uh, and then it is stable towards heating because it has a high, uh, because it, uh, it can last long for heat. Uh, it cannot last long for heat. High tensile strength and hardness. So it has high tensile strength. That is why bullet cannot penetrate or fire cannot go thinner. And it is elastic. So uh, that's why uh, it can re rebound and reshape the uh, bullet easier. Lah. So the best answer in here is one, two, and four. I want three and four. Okay, number two, 32. Which of the following statement is true about the oxide of the group 14 elements in the periodic table? So A, all group 14 are covalent compound, which is wrong, okay? Uh, some of them are ionic. So B, oxide of the, with the formulas, uh, MO is more stable than MO2, no. Uh, only true for, 
PV. Okay. And then C, oxide of germanium T and lead are hypotheric, which is correct. And all oxide of MO2 can be decomposed to MO, which is incorrect in here. So the best answer in here is C. Then it goes to number 33. Why silicon tetrachloride is readily to hydrolyze where uh, carbon tetrachloride is not? So this one, as we already explained earlier, it is due to the presence of the empty D orbitals. Uh. So uh, silicon can have available D orbital where carbon cannot. So the answer is C. Number 34, tin 4 oxide can be prepared by refluxing 0.4 mole of tin with 0.3 mole of iodine to dissolve in 50 centimeter cube as tetrachloromethane. Okay, so orange crystal of the product obtained by filtering the hot reacting mixture and then cool the filtrate, which the following indicates that the reaction is complete. Now, so in here, uh, because stoichiometrically, you have one SN react with two I. So if you have 0 0.04, uh, you require 0 0.08. Okay, of SNO2. But in this case, uh, I, we only have 0 0.03. Ma. That means I minus is the limitant. I2 is the limitant. Okay, or well, S, uh, SN is the excess. So when limitant is completely react, that means the reaction is complete. Ma. Okay, so uh, in here, uh, the boiling point of the mixture is 77, which is uh, incorrect. No tin will remain. Tin will definitely be remain because tin is excess. Crystal will begin to deposit at the boiling solvent. Also does not explain that the reaction is stopped. And no more purple vapor is correct because you once the iodine is completely reacted, so you will not see any more purple vapor. Lah. So the best answer in here is D. Okay, then we go to 35. Silicon carbide, SIC, has a similar structure to the diamond. Which of the following are advantage using uh, silicon carbide ceramic compared to tin, uh, compared to steel? So uh, steel is a mixed alloy of the iron, uh, and they are held by metallic bond. Uh, while SiO2, uh, SIC, because they say it's a diamond, it is a giant covalent structure. Uh, okay? So the giant covalent structure usually has a higher melting point compared to that of the metallic bond. So uh, furthermore, it is more resistance to oxidation because all the covalent bonds are bonded to, uh, together to each other. So it is less likely to deform under compression, which is also correct. But the, ones, the only one that is incorrect is because silicon carbide it can conduct electricity. They cannot. Uh. So similar to diamond, uh, they cannot conduct electricity because they are no delocalized electron. Okay? So the best answer in here is one, two, and three. Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop my lesson until 35. So the rest 36 and the rest of the objective will continue tomorrow. And then tomorrow we're also going to do the structure questions. So uh, I guess um, that is all for the uh, chapter five, uh, this one. Huh? Okay, so I guess I see you all uh, in our next lesson.